Imagine reversing tooth decay naturally. Can you really heal a cavity? Is it possible? Today, we're gonna dive into the science of remineralization, exploring how you can potentially grow back your enamel and heal your cavities. Hello, I'm Dr. Stacy Whitman. I'm a triple board certified dentist in pediatrics, integrative dentistry, and naturopathic medicine. And today we're gonna unpack the myths around remineralization and show you how you can naturally heal your cavities at home. It's hard to understand why so many people don't believe that your teeth can be healed because our teeth all day, every day, demineralize, and remineralize. This is a natural process that happens every time we eat or drink anything besides water. The pH in our mouth drops and it's part of the digestive process. Minerals are pulled out of our teeth in the process of demineralization and assuming our oral microbiome is healthy and our saliva is healthy and we give our mouth enough time, our saliva will naturally push calcium and phosphorus and all these healthy ions back into our teeth and naturally remineralize our teeth. So this is a process that happens all day, every day. What happens when you get a cavity? A cavity is when the balance between remineralization and demineralization is off and you are getting more demineralization than remineralization. And over time, when you're in this state, minerals are pulled out of your tooth to such an extent that you actually get a hole in your tooth. That's called a cavity or a cavitation, meaning hole. So it's important to remember that your saliva plays a crucial role in this remineralization process, delivering minerals back onto your tooth surface. To support remineralization, it's essential to consume a diet rich in calcium, phosphorus, vitamin D3, K2, fat soluble vitamins, trace minerals, and really cut back on ultra processed foods, sugars, and flours. So the standard American diet is really what is influencing and causing such a cavity crisis among us humans. It's still the number one chronic disease globally, even with advancements in technology and in dentistry. And the real villain in the room is big food and the ultra processed foods that we eat. If you eat a pretty clean diet, one of whole foods, you are not going to be losing as many minerals from your teeth because you won't be in the state of demineralization as often. These foods are meant to be um, consumed and snacked upon. So you're eating all day, nibbling, nibbling, sipping. And every time you're doing that, your mouth is staying in a state of acidity or demineralization. And so you're just so out of balance. So what you eat and how often you're eating it matters. You really want to be eating on a schedule and not nibbling and snacking. We need to give our mouth a chance to rest so that our saliva can do its thing. And then how do we optimize our saliva? We have to be optimized in our fat soluble vitamins, in our minerals, but also we need to be making sure we're not mouth breathing. Um, and that our gut health is under control and that our oral microbiome is balanced. And so how do you do all of these things? This is where working with an airway trained or functional dentist can help. But when you mouth breathe, your mouth also becomes acidic and you're also shifting the microbiome to be one of more pathogenic in nature and more dysbiosis. Again, it's that acidity that's leaching and pulling the minerals out of your teeth. So if we can eat on a schedule, let's say every two hours, really focus on whole foods, trying to stay hydrated, try to stay optimized in these vitamins like D3, K2, magnesium, vitamin A, trace minerals, um, hydration is extremely important, calcium rich foods, phosphorus rich foods. And when you can't, this is when supplementation is necessary. Unfortunately, our foods, even the cleanest, most organic, even those grown on farms tend to be deficient in the appropriate amount of vitamin and minerals that we need. So many of us do need to supplement. I do generally suggest all my patients supplement with a high quality vitamin D3, K2, and also a magnesium blend. I think those are absolutely critical for systemic health, but also for dental health. So how can you heal a cavity if you are imbalanced? 
Now, what really matters is how deep is the cavity? Is it still in the enamel or is it just barely through the enamel? If it's still in the enamel, you often can completely reverse it or remineralize it. If it's just through the enamel, I think it's worth trying to at least arrest it or slow its progression down, especially if it's a baby tooth, because maybe you'll slow that cavity down enough that the tooth falls out and it will never need treatment. If it's an adult tooth, it's harder to say you need to follow up with a dentist, but I have seen these quote unquote deeper lesions actually remineralize with a lot of um, effort and focus. Um, hygiene obviously matters as well as diet and then what you're using in your hygiene routine matters as well. If you are cautious about fluoride, as many people are becoming because of the concerns with neurotoxicity and its effects on the oral microbiome, many people don't realize that fluoride is antimicrobial. It's not selective and microbiome researchers are now showing that it can impair and inhibit a diverse microbiome and one filled with commensal and beneficial bacteria. Some people are more susceptible to these impacts than others, but if you're using fluoride toothpaste and you still are getting cavities, gum disease, you know, what are the reasons? It could be your diet, it could be how you're breathing, but it could actually be the product you're using is making your issues worse. It's keeping you in this perpetual cycle because of that antimicrobial nature of the fluoride. So what do I suggest? I suggest nanohydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is what our enamel is made of. It's calcium and phosphorus. Our bodies have no fluoride in them naturally. Our teeth do not have fluoride. We are not fluoride deficient. And I have seen clinically as well, I can back this up now with research, that nanohydroxyapatite is outperforming fluoride without those neurotoxic effects. The SCCS, which is the Scientific uh, Council for Consumer Safety out of the EU, has studied nanohydroxyapatite particles for almost a decade and recently, last uh, year in 2023, approved them for consumer safety if they follow certain manufacturing protocols. If you're using a high quality nanohydroxyapatite as any reputable brand should be, then you have no issues. These particles are dissolved completely in solution in just several minutes. That includes your saliva and your stomach. So there's no safety concerns with it crossing epithelial linings or the blood brain barrier. There's some internet rumors floating around. These are generally focused on animal studies where the animals have been injected with extremely high, high doses of a poor quality nanohydroxyapatite. Obviously, if you apply something IV, it's gonna have a very different impact on the body um, than it might if you are brushing with it topically. But not only is that important, it's also important to note they weren't using this approved nanohydroxyapatite, which is called nanoxin, and it's made in Portugal. And again, reputable, reputable brands will be using this um, I have found clinically it far outperforms any other toothpaste on the market. So when I'm putting my patient on a remineralization protocol, nanohydroxyapatite is always part of it. I do find it's outperforming microhydroxyapatite um, in the patients that are using my protocols. We see have wonderful case studies um, of literally now hundreds of patients um, over the many years I've been doing this who are arresting and reversing their cavities. Another thing that you can add is ozone oil. I like to mix this up. One night you use um, extra nanohydroxyapatite, you brush with it, maybe you use a nanohydroxyapatite varnish, you apply it on the lesions, you put it on your floss to get it between, you don't rinse, you don't eat, you don't drink, you go to sleep. The other nights, let's say every other night, you can use ozonated oil. I like olive oil um, or avocado oil, and you can apply that on your floss for in between. You can apply it on a little micro brush um, and apply it on the lesion or your finger. What is the ozone doing? It's actually killing pathogenic bacteria. So the idea is one day you're boosting the remineralization with that calcium and that phosphorus from that nanohydroxyapatite. The next day you're killing bad bacteria. Then, and then you alternate. So you're remineralizing, 
killing. Remineralizing, killing. I don't like people using ozone oil for too long, but I think for a month, two months, depending on the depth of the cavity, it can be very beneficial and it is part of the protocol. On top of that though, you have to be committed to clean up your diet. That means eating on a schedule, sticking to whole foods, really focusing on nutrient density um, and eat a rainbow foods. All those healthy prebiotics are gonna feed the good bacteria, feed your good guys, and probiotics too. I love oral probiotics, so a wonderful routine at night is to tongue scrape. I like tongue scraping for oral microbiome modulation and balance. Then you floss, you brush, ideally with a nano hydroxy appetite, and then you take an oral probiotic. My favorite brands, because I know you'll ask, are Fig, Feed Your Good Guys, is an oral microbiome supportive remineralization toothpaste with prebiotics, amino acids, and that high quality nano hydroxy appetite I spoke of earlier, Nanoxin. Um, full disclosure, I am the co-founder of that and the co-formulator of this, so I'm obviously biased, but the reason we created this toothpaste was because we didn't find anything else on the market that made us happy, that had the emulsifiers removed, their surfactants, all those additives, the essential oils and the coconut oil. It's very important to know essential oils and coconut oil are antimicrobial. You do not wanna be using these daily. They can kill healthy bacteria. Many people don't realize that. Less is more. We do not wanna be killing bacteria all day, every day. The ozone oil can be beneficial just for a short duration as we're trying to get things back in balance. Once I followed up with a patient and I think we're heading in a great direction, we get them off the ozone oil and just on the nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste. The other thing that's important, if you are a mouth breather, a lot of these efforts may go to waste. When you mouth breathe, your mouth dries out, you lose your healthy saliva, and then also the pH will drop. So it's really important to figure out why you're mouth breathing, what you need to do to get it under control and then work towards nasal breathing. You'll have a lot more success with arresting and healing your cavities that way. So to conclude, I just wanna remind everyone, you can heal, arrest, or reverse your cavities. It obviously makes a difference how big and deep they are. Sometimes we still have to do traditional dentistry and deeper and wider cavities, but if we catch them at the right time, you can control these procedures and not have to sit in the dentist chair having your teeth drilled or lasered to have these issues fixed. Your body wants to heal. Your saliva is the golden elixir of your mouth and your body. Keep it healthy, keep it hydrated, keep it mineral rich and work with a dentist that will work with you on these processes. This is why it's important to see a dentist regularly. If we catch things early, we can control them, we can arrest them, we can um, heal them, we can have control and understand what's going on in your body to create this imbalance. Because an important thing to know is, if your teeth are losing minerals, that means there are deficiencies and imbalances in your whole body. What happens in the mouth doesn't just stay in the mouth. We're very lucky that we can look in the mouth and get a picture, a visual picture of what's happening in a patient's body. If you have a lot of cavities, gum disease, bad breath, tonsil stones, these are things to try to unpack because there are imbalances happening. Microbial imbalances, pH imbalances, there could be genetic influences, mouth breathing, um, possible autoimmune issues, nutritional deficiencies. And this is why working with a knowledgeable provider really is important. So yes, you can heal your cavities. I hope this helps. If you found this helpful, please like this um, page, follow along, share it with friends. I have a lot more content coming out to help you help avoid unnecessary dental procedures. Um, and please reach out and let me know what you think. Please share your experiences with healing and arresting cavities below. I'd love to hear from you. And stay healthy out there, everyone.